Beto O'Rourke make a mistake running for president? The overwhelming support he got from the Democratic Party in his Senate race against Ted Cruz has vanished now that he's competing against more than a dozen other candidates. He is currently polling at just 8%, well behind Biden and Bernie. Joining us to talk about this is Travis Kennedy Jr. Chairman Matt Makoviak and Mario Carrillo from America's Voice. Mario, did Beto miscalculate a little bit in running for president? Well, I don't think it's my place to say that he made a mistake in running for president. And what we have here is a Democratic field that is very deep, it's very diverse, it's very qualified, so it's a good problem for Democrats to have. And, you know, I think uh, we're 10 months away from the Iowa caucuses, so O'Rourke, along with the rest of the Democratic field, have 10 months to make their case uh, to Iowa voters who will be the first to vote. Ma'am Makoviak, do you think the Beto campaign expected they would be leading in the polls, or at least closer already? Yeah, I, I'm not sure what their expectations were. I think uh, he probably waited a little bit too long. You know, he had a lot of momentum at the end of last year. A lot of that dissipated. Early in the year, he was getting vetted finally by the national media uh, uh, for his views and his experience. Um, and his really, I think, what I would argue is lack of substance. Uh, so he had kind of a bad first couple of months of the year, kind of took him some time to, to get the whole thing started. Um, I think that he mistook... Uh, the fact that basically every Democrat was for him in Texas in that kind of race versus a, a 15 or 20 candidate primer on the Democratic side where he's, as you say, polling in the 8% range. Look, I think he's a contender for the Democratic nomination. I don't think he's likely to win it, uh, but he raised $9 million, and so he's going to have the money to be competitive. The question is, what is his path to becoming the nominee? Okay. Well, talking about that, Mario. What does he need to change in his campaign from when he ran for Senate now that he's on the national scene? Well, I think he has to understand that it's a really long campaign, right? And I wouldn't put too much stock into the polling that we're seeing now. And I think uh, both President Trump and President Obama are good examples of why we shouldn't, uh, you know, focus too much on polling so far ahead of anyone actually taking votes. So I think as long as he's able to keep up his fundraising prowess as he did during the Senate race, if he's able to keep that going, he'll continue. Tender, but frankly, as I mentioned, we have a very deep, very diverse, very qualified field, and it's a good problem to have. So I think as long as he's able to continue being on the road, much like he did in the Senate, to the extent that he can, he'll try to run a campaign similar to that. And if he can start gaining some momentum ahead of the votes and certainly ahead of the debates that are coming up in June, I think he has a really great case uh, to make to the American people. Matt Makoviak, you've done this before. What would your campaign advice be for Beto O'Rourke? Well, I think I'd say a couple things. One, I think he has to start becoming substantive. He really hasn't been substantive as a candidate. He had really no platform when he ran for U.S. Senate. He ran on his personality and his charisma. He ran, sort of ran against Ted Cruz. Um, although it was a positive campaign, he, that, that was really why he was able to get support. Uh, when you're running for president of the Democratic side, the Democratic primary voters want to know where you are on the issues. Uh, and he's having to answer for, you know, not being uh, progressive enough as a member of Congress. Uh, he needs to explain why he doesn't have any major legislative successes in three terms in Congress. What prepares him to be president of the United States? So, you know, we'll see. He's got to carve out his own place in this Democratic primary. And again, find a way to survive Iowa and New Hampshire and be one of the final two or three people running on the Democratic side. He has the potential to do that. Whether he'll do it or not remains to be seen. Okay. All right. We've got to wrap it up. Mario, Matt, thank you both very much for coming by. Thanks. Thank you.